Hi. Uh, without further uh, ado, uh, uh, let's um, uh, let's introduce our next uh, speakers. Uh, we have on stage uh, Sehanish Khan, who is the head of uh, data partnerships uh, um, at Telecom, heading APAC and um, uh, Middle East region. And along with him uh, is uh, Shara Karasik, who is the product manager at Telecom. And uh, they'll be discussing about uh, what Telesign APIs uh, do to improve your customer experience, encourage the digital uh, consumption, and uh, prevent uh, fraud. Without further ado, let's get them on the stage, please. Thank you so much. Great. All the best, guys. Thank you, Zuber. And thank you, Zuber. Project Voice API di Telesign. Dan ini adalah Nihashi Shan, Kepala Data Partnership APAC. Kami senang mendapat kesempatan berbicara dengan anda sekalian mengenai bagaimana sebuah usaha dapat menggunakan Telesign API untuk meningkatkan pengalaman pelanggan, mendorong pemakaian digital, dan mengikuti mencegah penipuan digital. Dan berharap ketika COVID sudah terlewati, kami bisa datang ke Indonesia dan bertemu langsung dengan anda sekalian. And now in English, we have Snehashi Khan. <laughs> hey, uh, thanks Zubair and thanks Shara for the introduction. Uh, Salamat pagi semua. Uh, Snehashi Khan here, very happy to be here and walk you through what Telesign can help uh, e-commerce companies in general and uh, across industries, how we're preventing uh, frauds, online frauds from happening. Uh, but just a quick overview of e-commerce in Southeast Asia. I mean, we know that the e-commerce industry in Southeast Asia is growing. It's a $25 billion plus industry today. Uh, but COVID has obviously helped fast track that growth. Uh, you know, during the COVID phase alone, uh, the e-commerce industry has seen over 50% uh, increase in usage. Uh, however, one key aspect of uh, the e-commerce uh, challenge that remains in Southeast Asia is the online fraud. And, you know, there are over $260 million in reported frauds annually in this region. And of course, there's going to be a far substantial chunk of online frauds, uh, which is not reported and of course you know that doesn't leave a good uh, consumer experience uh, when somebody faces fraud um, interesting fact and then this is very specific to indonesia is that uh, you know it's seen globally that uh, online transaction in indonesia is uh, could potentially could be is 12 times more likely to be a fraudulent transaction as compared to a global uh, online transaction uh, walk with us with Telesign as we take you through how we help e-commerce companies deliver a dynamic and a secure uh, buying experience. Uh, from Southeast Asia, uh, if we move to uh, Indonesia market, uh, the e-commerce growth has been driven by the increasing smartphone penetration. Uh, smartphone penetration, which was less than 40% till about a year back, is growing at an exponential rate. Now, what it does is it's also exposing a lot of first time internet users. Uh, combine that with a large youth population of Indonesia who prefer e-commerce for the sake of convenience, you're seeing the boom in growth in e-commerce in Indonesia. Uh, what it's also done is people have started spending more. Uh, the average spend in per consumer in Indonesia now stands at a little over $97 per head. Now for fraudsters, that's great, right? Because it gives them an opportunity to attack more consumers. At the same time, because of the amount of spending that's happening, the overall value of fraud is obviously going to hit consumers and the brands very hard. Uh, the more preferred way of doing of e-commerce transactions today remains the mobile phone. You know, that's where it's convenient. All of us hold it. We spend the most amount of time in a day with mobile phone. And uh, what we've seen in Indonesia is uh, uh, Credit card, bank transfer does remain uh, a very key mode of uh, payments on the uh, e-commerce space. However, cash, cash on delivery also plays a very important role. Now, these growth, obviously, what how fraud happens is it's a combination of uh, identity being stolen, uh, 
you know, it, it could be a first party fraud, it's account takeover, a consumer trying to claim that I didn't place that order when a consumer had generally done that. And one of the very interesting uh, drivers for fraud is also a lot of aggressive promotions e-commerce companies do to get consumers on board. That also helps drive uh, a lot of, that excites fraudsters to actually create multiple accounts and, you know, misuse the promotion that uh, uh, is provided by the e-commerce companies. Uh, if you look at fraudsters, right, what do they typically do? Fraudsters, you know, how it is, how easy it is to get mobile numbers in the market today, these prepaid markets. So they tend to buy mobile numbers in bulk. Uh, there are a lot of these online websites also available, which are able to supply uh, masked mobile numbers for consumers and fraudsters with, an, with any malicious intent. A uh, lot of times fraudsters will mask bots of UIPs as genuine mobile numbers. Uh, SIM cloning, SIM swap, which is impersonating a SIM of an unsuspecting user, uh, which normally happens a lot of times in uh, collusion with, uh, you know, maybe store agents of telecom operators or retailers, where I can actually take over SIM of uh, another customer without them knowing. Stolen credentials, but no. But one of the bigger problems, of course, lies that I, as a user, I, I'm a genuine user. I haven't done a SIM swap. I haven't. I am using a genuine phone number, but I am actually coming into an e-commerce site to, with a genuine intent to create fraud. And that's where promotion abuse happens the most. Um, so how does TeleSign help, right? So what tele we do at TeleSign is uh, uh, we use a combination of uh, phone intelligence based on the mobile number. Uh, combine that with certain attributes that we get on the usage and behavior pattern associated with that phone number. Uh, plus, we have a database of uh, global, we have a global consortium of fraud. We use a combination of these two, the, all these, at different parts in the consumer journey to help ad address fraud, whether it's uh, to determine a high risk of fraud users in the early part of the journey during an account opening or a new user registration, whether it's to prevent chargeback or consumer security at the point of payment, at the point of checkout, or even account takeover case, we can help you validate uh, whether the guy who's trying to do a transaction is genuine or not, or whether there's a potential of fraud. And these solutions that TeleSign provide, a lot of it is very unique to what we do in terms of our data sets. Um, and like you see on your screen, uh, it covers the entire spectrum of journey from of a consumer across e-commerce, retailer, shared service, and even banks and uh, fintechs. So today, globally, we have been working with some of the leading e-commerce players, some of the leading fintech players, some of the leading banks, and helping them solve fraud across the different journey. But before we get into a little uh, more detail about, you know, how we are solving this problem, I would request my colleague Shara to walk you through who we are and, you know, uh, what we do. Shara. Yeah. So I'd like to give you a little background on who TeleSign is. We bridge businesses to the world of global telecommunications. Our platform connects and protects online experiences through our APIs that deliver user verification, data insights, and communications. Next slide. We protect 21 out of 25 of the world's largest web properties. Um, it, it's been very busy now during the time of COVID. So we started out in 2005 as a pioneer in two-factor authentication. So we added an extra layer of security to online accounts. That's how we started out. And then in 2010, we added phone data intelligence so businesses could learn more about users and protect their businesses. In 2016, we added communication services. We have a voice API, SMS API. And in 2017, we were acquired by BIX, the fourth largest telecom, which gives us a global end-to-end -end communications network, um, direct connections to carriers, and an expanded reservoir of data. So 
So our services, uh, to go into more detail, we have SMS and voice APIs. So for example, um, an e-commerce site can send users alerts, your order's ready for pickup, for example. Um, we can do verification through SMS or voice. We can do interactive voice response. Um, with score, we have reputation scoring to assess the fraud risk of a user. And with phone ID, we can answer questions about users based on their phone numbers. So their device, their contact information, et cetera. With voice verify, we have two-factor verification based on voice. So a user will get a one-time voice passcode. It's used all over the world to authenticate users. It transcends language barriers. It's a very user-friendly experience. Um, and we have lots of ways to um, prevent fraud using voice verify. So for example, we make sure that a message doesn't go to an answering machine. So we can detect an answering machine and then we, we won't um, send the voice message. We also use, um, we, we prevent international revenue share fraud attacks. Um, and, and those are when users or bad actors can um, divert voice traffic to premium numbers. So we automatically prevent that. And we also do a fraud risk assessment on the users immediately and we block high risk users. Right, so uh, thanks Shara. So when you look at, uh, so this first part is the OTP and really the authentication, right? And what that problem, what it's obviously trying to do as we know is it's helping understand whether a, a consumer or a customer is actually carrying the phone that they claim to do or not. However, what that does not do is help understand whether the, that particular consumer is a high risk or low risk. And we do that with the combination of these two services. One is a score, we call that a reputation score, and the other is phone ID. Uh, score is something uh, that TeleSign builds, which is very unique and proprietary to data that TeleSign owns. Uh, what is that data? Now, TeleSign is today globally the largest provider of authentication across the industry. Um, like we mentioned, the 21 of the top 25 uh, online clients itself are our customers. Uh, and we do over 12 billion authentication transactions every year. Now, because of this, we do have access to a lot of historic authentication transactions of mobile numbers. At the same time, also, we are able to know in real time currently how many OTPs and requests are being generated on a certain phone number. Now, using the, that becomes a very unique set of data proprietary to us. Uh, combine that with, we also have the largest global consortium of fraudulent mobile numbers. Now this consortium is a database of high risk and known fraud numbers which are contributed to us by our customers. Uh, on top of that, the engagement that we have with BICS and relationship with telecom operators, it helps us access certain signaling attributes associated with the phone number. So when a mobile number is queried to us after an OTP validation, we would first check whether the phone number is active, inactive, connected to a network or not. We will then determine whether this phone number is a bot or does it look like a VOIP or does it look like one of the free uh, masked phone numbers that is available on the internet today. Uh, once that the genuineness of the phone number is has been established, we will then be running our machine learning algorithm on the other data patterns uh, that we spoke about, which is authentication history so we would know that hey you know this looks like this number has received asking for OTP from five different websites in the last 30 minutes. Uh, we study the patterns of uh, how the A2P usage has been on that phone number. So we have close to about 2200 variables that actually goes into our machine learning algorithm uh, to build what we call as a reputation score which is scored on a scale of 0 to 1000. Of course the higher the score the more riskier the number is uh, supposed to be. Uh, when you look at the phone ID aspect of the service, phone ID is really complementing what SCORE is offering, wherein along with just information and the SCORE, we also are able to provide you information such as uh, this phone number belongs to which carrier, uh, what's, how old is that phone number, does it, is the phone less than 30 days old or is it 
less more than six months old uh, has there been a sim swap on this phone number in the last 24 hours uh, you know is this a prepaid postpaid number and so on and so forth so these are different multiple attributes that we can provide what we additionally provide through the phone id service is our kyc so and that's very required from an e-commerce industry when a person has declared their phone number name and address we help you validate whether that phone number really belongs to that name and address or not whether it's really associated with the name and address or not and that's important because as e-commerce companies especially for a lot of cash on delivery orders you would be delivering orders to that declared address so it becomes very important as e-commerce companies to know and confirm that the address which has been declared by the consumer at the point of registration or at the point of checkout as part of delivery address is also the place where this consumer actually resides or not so that's the additional service we provide to you so when you look at a combination of score and phone id together we help solve the problems that we speak about now obviously uh, you know when we give you a score we don't just give you a score with a recommendation but what we are also able to provide to you is basically a score along with certain attributes or reason codes like we call it to help you understand why is a score being classified as such so for example on the right side you see a, a phone number has been scored 925 which is obviously a very high risk user now we are also telling you that why do we think it's a high risk user one because we feel this is like a toll free number and that's because probably it has a lot of outgoing calls of short duration over a lot of period of time uh, probably there are a lot of missed calls on this number probably we've seen this number access trying to request for otps from let's say five different websites in the last 20 minutes uh, there's probably been a lot it's been a dormant number with no usage for a very long period of time so different such reason codes and what our clients we have seen in this industry use is besides with consuming this course also tend to use these attributes into their final uh, decisioning uh, engine before allowing or blocking a certain transaction or a registration uh, integration is very easy all our rest api based services uh, uh, latencies are not very high um, and you know you can just call and we can have a, i mean this is just an illustrative of and this is a very simplistic illustration of how a new user new user registration or account opening would happen wherein a user comes on your website enters his name phone mobile number you send an otp which you could have your existing infra that's something telesign can help you with at the same time when you call our service for understanding the risk and understanding certain parameters associated with the phone number once that has been established we will help you address you can call our api to validate the name and address and then we can also provide you certain other attributes that you can take help you take the final decision on what is to be done with that particular transaction or a customer um, similarly at the point of checkout when a customer is just trying to has just logged into the website to do a transaction you can first and foremost validate using our score whether this looks like a, a risky has there been a change in the consumer behavior in the past and has it has it started showing any risky behavior of late which is becomes very important uh, you can check with us whether this phone number which was associated with an account does it have a deactivation history because in prepaid now num market numbers get churned and gets reassigned very quickly over a period of three four months because if you know it's this number was deactivated and the current age on network is showing small then you know for sure it is a different user who's trying to log in with probably same credentials but not the earlier consumer so you could actually that gets flagged off as an account takeover of fraud and you can actually block that transaction again if all that goes well and at the point of checkout and before you process the payments it always is a good idea to check with telesign and we can tell you that hey you know there looks like a sim swap has happened on this phone numbers in the last 24 hours what that would do is it alerts you as a brand to say that hey sim swaps happened in the last 24 hours probably a high risk customer let me either block that transaction or let us put in some additional security checks before processing that transaction um, we have had multiple customers around the world who are using it uh, uh, i would request shara to walk you through one of a very interesting use case with a customer of ours adam sure so adam tickets is a social ticketing app backed by companies like disney lionsgate 20th century fox and they started offering coupons and that attracted a lot of users who created fake accounts so they could get more coupons so 
Adam tickets came to us to solve their issue. Um, and so what they did was they implemented SCORE and they reduced their coupon abuse by 80%. They lowered their customer acquisition costs. They created a new account registration process that identified legitimate users without additional friction. So SCORE allowed them to decide whether to allow, flag, or block a user, and that kept the bad users out. So again, they reduced the coupon fraud abuse by 80%. Yeah, so that's had a big impact on the use cases of over 80%. And uh, you know, as we kind of get to the last slide, uh, what I would request you is, uh, we are there, we have a virtual booth, our colleagues, Andy and Troy are available at the virtual booth any point of time. Feel free to reach out to them uh, to kind of understand more about our use cases and you know what we've been doing uh, in the market. And do we have time for questions, Super? Yeah, unfortunately, uh, we have only one minute left. Uh, really uh, interesting insights, uh, Mr. Khan and uh, Shada, uh, especially to see how uh, TeleSign is uh, helping to reduce the fraud. Uh, and especially, I would be personally interested to know more about how how this will also help in the e -save. So probably we'll take it offline about it and then uh, get back to you and discuss it. Thank you again. Thank you so much uh, for your time. Thank you so much uh, for sharing a uh, very interesting use case for our temple. Thank you. 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 Thank you.